It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. It is a Monday. I'm at Waterwise Botanicals, my mothership, my happy place. I am here to pull plants for our project that we're breaking ground on in Mira Mesa on Wednesday. And the display gardens are just looking so great that I thought that I would share them with you. Uh, I mean, these plants have been here for a really long time. Now, like that Kalanchoe bayerensis up here. Let me see if I can get to it. You know, just kind of for scale. I mean, look at this. This is also called felt plant. It's such a, um, a sensory plant. It feels so good. Um, great for in a garden with children. It's non-toxic to the best of my knowledge. I haven't eaten it, but I don't think it's, it's problematic. Uh, and it feels really, really good to touch too beautiful silver blue color companions here with the crassula silver dollar um, just a really pretty pretty combo now remember waterwise botanicals is up in bonzel uh, which is north inland san diego county and it's probably varies between 9b and 10a if you want to talk zone uh, so, you know, and this is a very, very exposed bed. So we've gotten some heat this year, not too bad. You can see that the aeoniums are starting to close up. Particular these, particular, particularly these aeonium herbicums will go very dormant and the little rosettes will close up tight, self-protection and go dormant uh, and not look the hottest. But if you can provide shade for your aeoniums, they will go into only semi-dormancy, which means they'll stay a little more open and look a little better throughout the year. This is Echeveria harmsii ruby slippers. Such a stunning, stunning plant. And this is getting ready to bloom. Uh, it'll take off here in July and August, throw off some really, really beautiful flowers. Uh, this Pacopodium up here is giving me life. It's got one, two, three, four trunks, and then a few of the trunks, well, all of them have split into more branches. And what a showstopper. You know, if you're looking for a tree, why not a Pacopodium lumerii? I mean, look at that. It looks like a palm tree because it, it is a Madagascar palm, but it needs no water. It doesn't need the arborist to come out and lace it every year. It, it really doesn't need a darn thing and it flowers so beautifully. Behind it, cautionary tale, Euphorbia tirocali sticks on fire. Look at the size of that. It's at least 25 to 30 feet tall. Um, wow. Uh, over here is the Euphorbia milii ready red, and at its base is the sedum, um, probably it's probably California sunset Adolphi I would think that's a really really striking bam bam in your face combo too and this just makes my heart happy they cleaned out whatever was in here it looks like some sort of grapto petalum grapto sedum sedivaria I'm not sure but they have cleaned it and are preparing to plug in some new starts stunning aloe hybrid here uh just wow on that who knows and one of my favorite statues pieces of garden art of all time is this flying pig <laughs> speaks to me it's my spirit animal i love this thing um more adolphi more ready red then over here We've got Cameronii, Aloe Cameronii, and you can see where they have cut this plant back hard and it is pupped out and given them all of these babies, which they no doubt will harvest, pot up in one gallons, root and sell. You can see some really big mature heads here. Those will probably go eventually into um, as much as a 24 inch can. And then behind this, is an aloe plicatillus hybrid and you can see the difference so dramatically between these two aloes this one is far more green with little orange 
striations and little needles and this one has a larger thorn needle uh, and is far more blue and of course is more compact where this one is more of a tree aloe just oh my gosh so pretty watch out behind you greg for that irrigation um here is uh aloe rubra violacea this is one of my favorite aloes of all time not only is it a stunning specimen in the garden but it blooms this really gorgeous plume so it's just such an incredible winter uh, moving on around here's another aloe um celestii maybe very cool popcorn-y kind of a firecracker i'm not sure what they call it but you can see that it's ready to be de, de uh, headed it has thrown off its seeds and is finished so this could be obviously clipped for aesthetic purposes where is this pine tree ah right behind me oh gosh ptsd pine needles um and then around here, we've got Crassula undulata, uh, and they've also taken and cut pieces off, no doubt for propagation here. A ginormous stand of ready reds, a cotyledon silver dollar, that's a pretty combo too. And then here we've got more Echeveria harmsii, some really beautiful uh, Crassula, that's, um, that's the new hybrid. I don't remember the name of it. It's not um, Lucier. It's something else that grows a little taller. Uh, and that aloe behind it is so gorgeous. Look at the giant head on that. And then if you've got a big slope and you're looking for a ground cover, look no further than Portolacaria afra variegata. This is not a hardy plant, unfortunately. It will not tolerate freeze, uh, hard freeze. If you get a few dips below, it should be okay. But dang, uh, this is so much better than any of the traditional ground covers that I've seen that require copious amounts of water to grow. Um, love this plant. Uh, also great in specimen gardens as just kind of a filler for contrast and for, for interest. So that's the... Um, that's one of the display gardens at Waterwise. Uh, now I will take you over to Rapid Retail. If you come to Waterwise, you want to hit Rapid Retail first, which is the, the uh, display area to your left as you pull onto the property, because that's where they pull all the good looking stuff from the fields for sale. So you can absolutely march around the many acres on this property, but I would encourage you to start in Rapid Retail first because that's what I do pro tip so right as you right as you pull in you see these euphorbia milii um, my gosh this hybrid the flowers are just fire whoa so if you're looking for a plant that blooms pretty much year-round in warmer areas milii is a great choice these plants back here the, this is called caprosma or mirror plant because the leaves are glossy and mirror-like all the time. This comes in many different types. There's uh, small leaf, large leaf, different variegates, different variations in colors. There's one called tequila sunrise that's really stunning. And this is what I call a succulent compatible. This is a perennial. It's not a succulent, but it is fairly drought tolerant. It's very tough. It um, will tolerate... Um, a lack of water and not die uh, and it's very amenable to pruning so i will sometimes well in the past i haven't really recently but i have used caprosma as a companion plant in some of my succulent gardens from time to time then over here the mammillarias i have tagged this gem for my wednesday project um you'll come when you come as a uh, as a as a mere mortal um customer a retail customer you will pull a cart uh and and bag your own groceries i i buy 
you know, hundreds and hundreds of plants at a time. So I come in and I tag the specific plants that I want and then they're loaded and delivered for me. Uh, you can also absolutely schedule a delivery if you have a really big order. They'll do that, no worries. Okay, moving on. So we've got aloe plicatillus. This is something that I could rarely find here in the past that's starting to become kind of common and I'm thrilled. We love our aloe plicatillus. This common name is called hand prints. I never heard that before. Super cool. Also, Waterwise is now offering a really nice selection of glazed pottery. Um, check out the Mangabe kaleidoscopes. I pulled this one for Wednesday. Beautiful, beautiful plant. And this swordfish uh, agave, xylocantha, um, that I got for Manteca. This is a hardy agave. Um, they were going to sell some to a big commercial grower or nursery or client, I'm not sure. And they said, nah, we don't want a delivery. So these are now, there's like 10 of them here. Uh, this is a really unusual plant and I would, it'd be worth a trip down here just to grab one. I did. Um, more mangaves and gustafolias over there. And typically I will ask for one each of all of these different varieties of mangave. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, types here in the three gallon can. So I got seven of these for Wednesday plus that big 15 gallon um, kaleidoscope. I just, I mean, if the names on Mangaves are worth it, are worth the ticket price, aren't they? Desert Dragon, Purple People Eater, Mission to Mars, Bad Hair Day, Lavender Lady. I mean, there's just so many cool names. Here's my trio of Mammillaria that I pulled for Wednesday here that I tagged pink. Very cool. I'm really into the mams right now. And then we've got our one gallon assorted plants. I typically will pull from here. These look great. I don't tag them because they all look good. So I'll just say I want 12 of them or 24 of them or whatever it is. Um, absolutely fantastic, full, happy looking plants. I got a combo of the cotyledons too, both the long fingers and the purple variety. Now I skipped the blue elf. I'm going to see if Caesar has some of these at Sun Valley because I'm not loving these. They're too small. I want blue elf that will fill up the whole can if at all possible. So I skipped on those. That's why I come in and I pull my own orders. I don't want to phone it in because I want to see the plants with my own eyes and pull things that I think look really good. Um, the Vera Higgins, this is a favorite for me. The, the Ruprestri, the Sedum Ruprestri, I don't, this is a hardy plant. It'll, it'll, you can snow on this, but I don't know, they're just a little, they tend to be a little fragile here in San Diego and I don't have good luck with them sustaining year in and year out, so I don't typically buy this plant. We've got Neon Breakers. Oh, here's some more Caprosma, and I know I'm going too fast and getting too excited and poor Greg's trying to keep up. Um, this is called Marble Queen and it is just that. It is a yellow and green variegate. And it can be companioned with some of the other types too, if you want to just turn and turn your yard into a riot of color. Super spectacular. Okay, more, more one gallon. My uh, there's my Portalacaria afra variegata. I typically will get a few of these for every job, for the reasons I explained earlier. And yeah, yeah, see the pink on this aloe hercules come over here greg it's got a i mean it's a split head it's straight this is one of the best looking aloe hercules i've ever seen and i'm just thrilled 
with this purchase. Also, down on the north slope, which is a growing ground, obviously to the north of the property, uh, where I've been granted access recently, they've got a crested pacopodium that I bought that is gonna blow your mind. And if I weren't moving, uh, I would buy it myself. And I still might, I don't know. I mean, it's a rarity. It's just a really unusual plant. I can't wait for you to see it when it arrives. Here we have one gallon Echeveria Harmsii Ruby Slippers. This is absolutely one of my favorite plants of all time. You can't beat it for color, texture, flower. It's pretty tough as you've seen it over in the growing grounds, just spreading and growing like wildfire. Then we've got Athona Capensis, Little Pickles. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with Athona Capensis. Uh, in small doses, it just it can get rangy really fast. But I do have some in my big clamshell by the front door that I'm thrilled with. And I put some in my fountain, which will be coming with me when we move. Um, let's see. Oh! So, here we have assorted succulents. Now, I, I mean, I was like a fly to honey on this stand of plants because this was an aloe that I'd never seen before. It looks kind of like Apache. It looks kind of like Ruticope, but neither. It's uh, got speckles and variegation, fantastic yellow flowers. So I went to Carly here at Waterwise and I said, what is that? And it turns out about a year ago, they bought these from a backyard grower who didn't want them anymore because they had gotten too big. And he didn't know what they were either. They're just a cross between who knows what. Love that. I mean, this is one of my favorite things is finding that thing that even the pros and the experts and the growers are like, I don't know. So uh, I got six of these for my Mira Mesa job. Oh, okay. So because I am working in Mira Mesa and it can get hot, it, you know, it's on the east side of the 15 and I want to avoid like Aeonium Zwartkopf. This guy here, as pretty as these, these uh, royal pinwheels are, uh, nobody goes dormant like Zwartkopf. And this is an exposed front yard I'm working in. So just because a plant looks great doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to choose it for every project. I need to think about my exposure, my zone, and my microclimates too. And as I'm talking to you, I'm super distracted by these gorgeous creatures. Now these would be the little siblings of that giant splithead Hercules that I bought. But these would be great for y'all, right? Aren't they stunning? Beautiful, beautiful plant. And then over here, you know, more growing grounds with the stands of giant barrels, no polys. We've got um, Pringlei, a stand of moon glows. Uh, dang, look at these. Apuntias getting ready to go off with their beautiful flowers. More ground cover. That is an agave. I don't remember the type. It's not Dazzlerian longissimum. It's an agave. Filament? No, it's not filamentosa. I don't remember because I don't. I don't generally use it because it's super vicious. It has. Uh, I mean, it just tear you. It just tears you up. So it's really hard to work on it. It also has a really um, aggressive tap root, which makes it hard to get out. So it's not one of my favorite agaves. But oh my gosh, how could I walk right by this Picarnia recurvata? In full bloom, I might add. Wow, what a gorgeous specimen, right? Let me get underneath it so you can get the full effect of just how big this is. This is almost as exciting as seeing my first redwood 
up in uh, up at um, McLeod Falls in Shasta County. Fan freaking tastic, beautiful plant. Oh my gosh, and this Bainsy eye over here. Check this out. Woo wee! Again, you need a tree. Uh, look at this. Codex, look at this magnificent creature. I don't even know where to begin. It is art. You can stand here and look at this all day long. The nooks, the crannies. Wow, what a phenomenal, phenomenal specimen plant that is. So if you've got an estate property and acres to fill and you don't have some of these big, beautiful succulents, shame on you. Look at this, Aluaudia procera. Bam! Right? How phenomenal is that? I've got that one in my backyard that has the little cousin it poof on, up on top. And this one is just, mine pales so by comparison. I mean, this is insanely gorgeous and I can't even count the number of heads on this plant. How fabulous. Wow. All right, well, um, there's so much more to see here and I'm going to share it with you as I'm able. When I'm shopping for plants, sometimes I'm on a bit of a time crunch. But today I had, I had a minute, so I wanted to show you what was growing on at Waterwise Botanicals. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. Bye guys!